Hi everyone, today let's talk about a topic that is very exciting and has the power to completely change the landscape in the data world. And that topic is natural language to structured query language or NL to SQL. And I'm going to show you today how you can actually build your own solution with Python and the OpenAI API. First, let me just clarify what is NL to SQL. So we're talking about taking English, the English language and transfer, transforming that to SQL queries. Think about a business stakeholder that would ask the question, how many orders did we have yesterday? They could just ask that question in plain English and the NL to SQL solution will transfer that to a SQL query, return an answer, and then formulate a proper answer in English and give that to the business stakeholder. NL to SQL is really the future of data in business. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about that and then I'm gonna talk about the code structure that you would need to implement such a solution and I'm also going to share with you the Python code to do so. Obviously, keep in mind that that is not a productized, a production-ready solution. It's a starting point. Let's jump into it and let me talk a little bit about the future of NL to SQL or, again, natural language to structured query language. First, many companies are working on this right now. There are many people in the data community that think that this is a solution that we'll see in five years, but it's not the case. I believe that at the end of 2024 or 2025, we'll have plenty of NL to SQL solutions that would be product productized and available on the market. The reason is that companies like Microsoft, Amazon, and other big companies are already working on this today, and they shared solutions that I've played with that are pretty convincing. The second point that I want to touch upon is that, you know, what is the highest level programming language out there? And to answer that question, if you think about the evolution of programming, you know, we started with things like assembly and then we went to things like C and more recently like things like Python. But you know, English, you know, can English be actually a programming language? There's actually no reason for why English cannot be a programming language. And you know, if we can get English to become a programming language, then everyone, everyone suddenly become a programming expert. Why? Because we learned English when we were kids. And you know, if a machine can take my English language and transform it into a program, then you know, I don't need to learn any programming languages. Obviously in this video, we won't focus on all programming languages. We'll focus only on NL to SQL, so SQL. But you know, what is SQL used for? It's used to retrieve data and to answer ultimately business questions or to move data around. If I can do all of that in English, then imagine how, you know, how big the impact will be on data democratization, meaning that anyone in a company would be able to query data from the database just by writing English sentences. And again, if you believe that we this is in the future, like five years, 10 years, you're mistaken. This is coming in a year or two maximum. So now let's talk about, you know, what's the code structure that you would need to implement for an NL to SQL solution? There are obviously many ways to kind of build an NL2 SQL solution, but here I've chosen one of these solutions, one type of solution that I want to show you. First, we'll start by loading the environment variables, and then we will initialize clients. We'll also initialize a transformer model. The transformer model will take English text, convert it to embeddings so that we can retrieve that data more easily. Then we will create a file with SQL queries and questions that will serve as kind of a mini database of questions and SQL queries that correspond to those questions. Once we have that file that contains both our questions and the SQL queries, we'll go to step five, which is generating embeddings from those query examples. The next step will be to ask a question to the model. And from that question, we'll find similar examples that exist in our query files to that question that we just asked. We'll also make sure that you know, the user actually provided a question because if it's not the case, then we'll prompt the user to do so. From there, you know, we will have examples of past queries that are similar to the current question and we'll be able to feed that to the OpenAI API and present the OpenAI API with examples of questions and queries. And from there, it will be able to provide a query for the current question that we are asking the model. Therefore, at the end of step eight, we should have an actual query that we can use to retrieve the data 
necessary to answer the question. Step nine will actually be running the query and then retrieving the results and then passing that again to the OpenAI API to be able to contextualize and provide an answer in English. Before we start writing the code, I want you to create this file. So this file is questions and then you add this little separator here and you write the actual query that would correspond to the data needed to answer that question. So here, for example, I have things like, you know, what is the date today? And this would actually just take the current date, you know, and what is the same day last year? Then it would just have the corresponding queries. And it I, the way I structured the file is just increasing in complexity. So here I have who are the top five clients last month. This will actually be a query to retrieve the five clients. Once that file is made, then just save it. And you will also need, if you're using BigQuery, a service account key. So I have mine here. Obviously, I'm not thinking about security uh, components here. And then also create an environment uh, with environment variables to store your OpenAI key. So now let's look at the code needed to implement such an NL to SQL solution. But before we do, I'm going to show you what that program actually does. So you can ask it questions such as, you know, what date are we today? And as you can see, the model will return the query, which in this case is select the current date in the East, Eastern time zone. And it will then write text to say today's date is February 3rd, 2024, which is accurate. But then I can also ask it business questions. For example, I can ask it, how many reservations did I have in January of 2024? And here it will actually return the query that it used to retrieve the data, it will then pass that data to OpenAI and you will have an answer in English. And of course you can tweak your prompt to have it return what you want in terms of, of an answer. What's even more cool is that, you know, you can build a UI out of this. So you could build a UI for business stakeholders where they can ask their questions and then you know you would just see an answer pop up you can even have a slack bot think of that a slack bot people could ask the slack bot you know what how many sales did i have yesterday and what was the most popular country things like that and the slack bot could actually run this create this query and then generate an answer with the query and then you would have a very robust you know an interesting solution for your stakeholders Okay, so now let's jump into the code and let's look at how you would go about building a solution like, like this. Okay, so first let's start by importing all of our libraries. Most of them are pretty standard, like the environment. You also have the OpenAI uh, library. You have the BigQuery library. But you also have things that you might not be familiar with, like cosine similarity. I'm going to explain what that is later on. And also a sentence transformer. So here, let's start by loading environment variables. So to do that, don't forget that you actually need to have a .env file where you store your OpenAI API key. Right after you loaded the environment variable, you simply need to initialize some components. So here I initialize the OpenAI client. I also initialized the BigQuery client. And I also initialized the transformer model that we'll use, which is the AL mini LM. L6v2, and that will actually help us, this model will help us to create embeddings. After we're done with loading everything we need, let's look at some functions that I created here. The first one is reading examples. So we created that file, which is example queries, but now we need to actually read that file. This function will simply go through all the lines in that file, and we'll use that separator that we included to separate questions and queries. And it will append that to a list, which, which is examples here. And it will return that list. So that list will contain basically question and query, and you will have all your set of questions and queries in that list. Then you have a function which is generate embeddings, which will allow you to take those questions and return an embedding from those questions. So in that case, we can pass the examples list that we had just above, and that's what, what we will do later on. The next function is to find similar examples. 
So this will use cosine similarity, which I won't get into because it's a bit too complicated for this video. But what this is doing is it's taking the top three similar questions by looking at the example queries file. So you type a question, it will take that question, and using cosine similarity, it will pull the top three questions in your file that are the most similar to the question that you just asked. Then you need a function to actually execute the query and print the results. Because once we have similar questions and we pass that to the OPM AI API, we'll ask it to generate that query. But we'll need a function to actually execute the query and print the result. And that function is, is exactly for that. Finally, we have this big function here, which is process question. This function is a bit more complicated. But essentially what it, it will do is it will take the question that the user has entered and it will find similar examples, store that in the relevant examples variable. If ever the user hasn't provided any question, it will just end the program and ask you know, the user to, answer, to enter a question. Once we have those examples that are relevant, we write a prompt here that says, you know, some of little things around our time zone is Eastern times and other characteristic of the business. But then it will also feed those similar examples to the model and ask it, based on the user question, return a query that we can use to retrieve the data, the needed data. The model will then return this query, which will be stored in SQL query. What we'll do after that is actually execute the query and we'll then have the results that will be stored in the SQL results variable. We now have a second prompt that will take the original question, feed the query and feed the results, and we will ask ChatGPT or the GPT API to return an answer in English that has a business context to it. That answer will finally be returned and printed to the user. Looking at the execution order here, then you can see that you know, we have the examples, we have the data set name, and we have the embeddings, and we process the question, which is pretty straightforward. So this simple program that I wrote in a couple of hours is actually an NLT SQL question, and there are many things that we could do to improve it. First, we could have some reinforcement done to it where you know, we present an answer to the user, and they have an option to say, yes, I like the sensor, or I don't like it. That could be used to reinforce the model even more. And also add a lot of guardrails around the generation of the query to make sure that it's done properly. And a lot of guardrails around the answer that are provided to the user to make sure that we don't have, for example, a SQL error that would return nothing to the user. So there are a lot of things we can do to improve the script. But I wanted to show you how easy it is to create an, an NL to SQL solution. So, you know, we could use this pretty much right now. But keep in mind, keep in mind, I've built this in two hours. Microsoft and Amazon and these companies, they have teams building that, dedicated to that. Not even a year or two, this will be productized. This will be a solution. So it scares me when I see, you know, junior people in data spending their time learning SQL and this will replace them pretty fast. It's scary, but at the same time, it sends a message, it sends a message, message that maybe focusing on, you know, SQL and advanced SQL and things like that is not the path to go anymore to get those data jobs in the future. This is. So maybe this is a better use of time as a business owner. You know, how can this be implemented as fast as possible for data democratization? And as a data professional, how can you, you know, create those solutions and implement the solutions in the business? That's more valuable than spending all the time learning SQL itself. Thank you for watching this video. And you know, if you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe. Follow me, it helps.